you, thank you. And welcome one and all to another edition of The Early Show with me, your host, Aidan Stone. So it's the 57th of March and it's, uh, what day is it? Is it Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday? I don't know, I don't know what day it is. So uh, how's your lockdown going? Yeah, good? Um, I don't know about you, but every time I go into the supermarket, I feel as though I'm taking part in a live reenactment of Pac-Man. <laughs> Maybe that's just me. Um, despite the, what you, the trickery that's going on here, I am doing this all alone. Yeah. Oh, so alone. <laughs> and a friend asked me, um, how, how are you going to cope with no one, no one laughing at your jokes? And I said, don't worry about that. I've had many, many years of experience with that. Now, I can do jokes, but I choose not to. <laughs> so here's, um, here's a useful meme, I think. Can we see that? <laughs> We've got a great show for you, great show for you this morning. We've got motivational speaker John Hatauka giving us tips on how to stay sane during the lockdown. Um, and we'll be right back after this. There are two kinds of teenagers today. One strives to rack up 30 million points on video games. The other finds it challenging to invent his own game. One depends on somebody else's imagination. The other on his own. One owns a video game machine. The other has a Commodore VIC-20 home computer. But they do have one thing in common. Someday, both will be trying to get into college. Welcome, my first guest of the show, uh, John Hatauka. John, it's great not having you with us this morning. And can I say it's a pleasure not to be with you as well. <laughs> right, great. Thank you. Can I say thank you for not inviting me to be with you? It's a pleasure. Right. Um, now, you came to visit us, and you actually came to the school a couple of years back, and you gave us some yep. magic and motivation. Uh, in a special assembly, uh, yeah. some of us, some of the people watching probably won't remember that, but then they probably won't remember me either. So it doesn't matter. So can you describe uh, what you do as a motivational speaker? What exactly is it that you do? <laughs> yeah, um, right. Usually, companies and even schools hire me to go into their place of work and give people little mindset tools, ideas and insights on how they can manage change and how can they build resilience and how they can stay focused in their working lives. So that's basically what I do. Great. So I'll, I'll, well, we have fun with it as well, usually. Anyway. Yeah. I'm, I'm hoping that because I've got you in this morning um, to tap your brains and tap your skills because we, as we know, we're going through an unprecedented change at the moment and how we cope with that change uh, is one of the most important things that I think our young people need to be thinking about so what do you think how how can we co cope with change something like this like we're going through at the moment i think the first thing to remember is that it's okay not to be okay to begin with so let me explain why that is a good thing um when we experience change um there was a, a swiss american psychologist who in 1969 uh, observed that when we go through a grieving process, if we lose somebody close to us um, and we go through a grieving process, we go through five basic emotions. There's shock, there is uh, denial, there is anger, there is uh, despair, and, there is, and then we get through to uh, acceptance. And she realized that those emotions that we go through when we experience grief, we also experience when we experience change. Because if you think about it, change is really the kind of a death of the old reality and a rebirth of a new reality or a new normal or whatever it might be. So that we don't know what that new normal is just yet. So it's all right to have all those emotions and experience all those emotions. The idea is to work your way through the, the, uh, the, the shock, the denial, the, uh, the despair, the anger, to get through to acceptance as quickly as possible so that we can be focused and be calm to take on whatever we need to take on and stay right. focused. 
that's interesting because we've just gone through this this change where the you know, school year suddenly cut short so there's a whole host of people who've not got closure they're not going to be sitting their exams they've not been able to say goodbye to everybody we've all dispersed um then we're all trapped at home or wherever we are and uh can't meet our mates we can't do this we can't do that so um it's interesting that our theme for this term would have been which it, and it, and it is um perseverance which means to keep going doesn't it and it's about that word that i think you talk about about um resilience i think you talk about to business people about being resilient um how do you think that applies to us now is it what is resilience and how how does it apply do you think how does resilience apply it's it's having the right techniques to have peace of mind it's having the right mindset techniques and tools to stay focused so to achieve whatever we want to achieve so in this case all right things have changed and we don't really know quite yet at the time of this recording what it is that we kind of want to achieve just yet because we're just waiting for things to settle down a little bit so that we can formulate some sort of a plan um we're not going to be in lockdown forever uh who knows how long we ought to be in lockdown for so i'm going to give you a, a couple of little uh, little tools uh, that hopefully hopefully will be, be helpful to you uh, the first tool is how to stay grounded am i, am I right to give away these tools no please yeah yeah yeah. You, yeah yeah and, and right, you can so, at home listen to this and let's see if we can all do it let's have a go for it. all right fine so if you're feeling angry overwhelmed or confused or whatever the best thing to do is find yourself a quiet place uh, sit in a chair, lie in a bed or whatever, and then close your eyes and then think of, uh, f not close your eyes, and then uh, name out loud five things that you can see. Name them out loud, five things that you can, see. you can see. So for me, I can see my printer, I can see my tea, I can see my microphone, I can see my telephone, I can see my remote control for the, uh, for the television. So name five things. Name five, uh, four things that you can feel. So that might be you can feel the chair. You might feel your thighs if your hands are on your thighs. You might feel the table if there's a table in front of you or the bed or the floor under your feet. Uh, your clothes that you're wearing. So name four things that you can feel and actually feel right. them. So you're going through. We're going through. Then name, senses, aren't we? Yeah. So we're going through our senses. Sorry? The ground is in the moment. That's what you're doing, isn't it? We're ground. This is this is a grounding exercise. Right. So being grounded in the moment. So if we feel a little, uh, as I say, agitated, yeah. this will help to calm us down. We've got sight. The next thing is feeling. Thing. Yeah, that's fine. See here. And then name three things that you can hear. I don't know if you might be able to hear the birds outside. I can only just hear the birds outside. Uh, I could hear your voice. I can hear. Uh, I can hear myself breathing. So name three things that you can uh, you can hear. Name two things that you can smell. I don't know. You might smell the dinner. You might smell your mum's perfume. You might smell. I don't know what the house smells like or the garden or whatever, but name two things that you can smell. Mm -hmm. And then the final thing is to name one thing that you can taste. Now, bearing in mind that this is during COVID-19, uh, I wouldn't suggest that you put your fingers in your mouth. <laughs> but under normal circumstances, if your hands are clean, you can put your fingers in your mouth under normal circumstances. But it might be that you just taste your saliva. It might just it might be that you just taste uh, you might have a glass of water nearby or have a, a drink nearby. You might have a taste of that or something. Okay, um, so so to, one thing that you taste is toothpaste. Pardon? Oh to toothpaste. You, you just brush your teeth or oh, toothpaste. And if you can't taste it, imagine imagine tasting something like toothpaste. Ugh. Just imagine tasting a lemon. Oh. No, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just thinking about flossing my teeth, but we're not going to go there. Anyways, <laughs> that's a horrible taste. Right, so that's basically a grounding exercise. Uh, the second exercise is um, realizing when we are in problem focus mode and switching it to solution focus mode, because quite often what happens is when we are in um, a panic or uncertain about something, we're mm. going to shock and we can focus on the problem. Oh, I can't believe, say for instance, I'm catching a bus, which yeah. you wouldn't do nowadays, but in the normal circumstances, you might catch, you might have an appointment 
I don't know, you're catching a bus. Let's go for catching a bus. Can't think of another example. But you run to the bus station. Let's say you're going to get it at the bus station. You run to the bus station and you miss the bus. The way our minds work, quite often we can go into problem focus mode. And we start saying things like, oh, I can't believe it. I've missed the bus. Oh, no, I've missed the bus. I Maybe can't that. believe it. Mm. I'm going to be now. I don't know what I'm going to do now because I'm going to be late and people are going to be angry where I'm going to go. And if... If only I'd spoken to my, if only I'd set off sooner, if only I didn't talk to my partner, if I didn't talk to my friend. And we start focusing on the problem. What we need to do if we are aware that we're focusing on the problem is acknowledge that we're focusing on the problem. Just notice that. But the next thing to do is to say, right, okay, so what is it that I do want to achieve? In this case, I want to catch a bus. I want to get to a destination, should I say. So now we ask questions. And the questions we ask ourselves are things like, okay, what needs to happen for me to get to my destination? Who can I ask for help from? Who can I turn to? Where can I find information that will give me the knowledge to achieve what I want to achieve? And ask those kind of questions. Mm -hmm. And it's all to do with the way our minds work, because our minds are like a genie's. If we say we don't know something or we focus on a problem, the genie will agree with us, or it will just look for solutions for the problem, look for the uh, to enhance the problem but if we say to the genie okay uh what answers do i need how how what, what how am i going to work this out how am i going to achieve this the genie will do its best to find an answer it may not find the answer straight away but it'll do its best to find an answer even if it's go talk to fred or look on it look uh, look it up on the internet or anything only if we're in solution mode if we're in problem mode then the genius would come up with more problems for us is that Exactly right, yeah. Because you focus on the problem, you're coming up to more problems. Or you're also, you know, you're coming up with more problems, but you're also focusing on how big the problem is. Right. As a, so you're just wasting time and energy on emphasizing everything that's wrong with the problem. Where really, you, we need to spend our time and energy on thinking, okay, so how can we overcome this challenge? What do we need to do to overcome this challenge? Because it's not about ignoring the problems and issues and challenges. It's just about focusing on the solutions. Does that make sense? It does, yeah. It does. Brilliant. So we've got two techniques there. The one about being grounded in the moment. Go through the senses. It was, what was it? Five things. See. see. Four things you can. Yeah. Hear. Touch. See. All right, three things. You, sorry, I'll say <laughs> that again. Five <laughs> things you can see. Five, five things you can see. Yeah. Four things you can feel, three things that you can hear, two things you can smell. Remember, you've got two nostrils, smell, and then one thing that you can taste. You've got one mouth. So do that to be more grounded and then switch from being problem focused to being solution focused. So if you catch yourself focusing on the problem, oh, I don't like my home. I can't do my homework. I don't know what to do with my homework. Uh, uh, I'm only going to get it wrong. So you're focusing there on the problem. Instead, it's, okay, so how can I do my homework? Um, who can I ask for help to do my homework? What would be the best conditions for me to work in so that I can do my homework? Asking those kind of questions. Great, that's brilliant. Great advice there. So um, now, to end with, you, you're famous from doing what you call a cheeky stunt or some sort of trick. Now, I don't know, we probably can't do any magic, but... Give us a little tip or give us a little... Well, I'll tell you what, I'll, we'll do a little stunt. A little stunt or something and you need a, you need a piece of string. So a rope. I haven't got any, I haven't got any string. It's all right, don't worry about it. I've, I've got two. Right, here we are. you can take this. You can have the, uh, the black and green oh, thingy. Sure. There, there you go. Right, so I've got the white one. You've got the black and green one. So the idea is, in fact, I'm going to cut this in half. So I've got one. There you go one length so the object of the exercise is to tie a knot in the string without letting go and not in the string without letting go of the ends you have to tie a knot in the string without letting go of the ends all right you have to tie a knot in the string without letting go of the ends how do we do that then Right, you ready? Here we are. So what you do is, and you won't be able to see this, but I'll, I'll describe it. So you put the string or the rope on the table. Right. So it's flat on the table. You fold your hands. 
and with one hand you pick up one end with the other hand you pick up the other end that's okay. it i know you didn't see me do it but then all you do is you unfold hands and you get a knot a knot there you go Brilliant. or you can oh. do it without crossing hands right so you got like that you got that you go like that you go like that and you go like that right so i'm going to have to play back in slow motion the magic that one out <clears throat> well john thanks for being with us this morning our first first of our online early shows and yeah uh, it's been a pleasure thank you for not having me <laughs> yeah and i hope you uh hope your lockdown is going well up there uh on the, the other side of yorkshire you're in west yorkshire aren't you yeah i'm in west yorkshire i'm in bradford i didn't do anything wrong i just live here <laughs> well we all have our penance to pay but um i know, I know. <laughs> okay thanks for not being with us and hope not to see you soon all right and i hope not to see you soon too. all the best bye bye everybody <laughs> bye. And we'll be sharing those tips and other ones on, on uh, how to reduce stress to use in your tutor times later on. Uh, this year I've decided uh, I'm going to, from now on, I think I'm going to communicate entirely in, almost entirely, in memes. So let's see, let's see how that works out. Next week, my guest will be the one and only Dr. Richardson, who is going to be talking to us about uh, what an EPQ is and how on earth are we going to award GCSEs and A-levels this year. So stay tuned, uh, stay safe, keep washing your hands, look after yourselves and those around you, and I hope to see you soon. Mm -hmm.